among the navigation tools in the 90 second website builder software, you have one here that's called navigation bar. And that's the one I want to talk to you about in this video. It's pretty easy to use. You just draw a box like anything else and you can create a menu or navigation. Now what's unique about this particular tool is that it is image based. And by that, I mean that each of these items are actually going to be using an image from a library of images that are built into the software. That's unlike a CSS menu or a menu bar or text menu, this tool uniquely is based on images. So because of that, you have a couple of limitations. Here's one of them. If we double click on it and we look at the configuration, the navigation bar does not allow you to create a hierarchy. In other words, you can't have items and then sub items or sub sub items like you could with some of the other navigation tools. So if that's what you want, you need to not use this tool. You need to use a CSS menu or a menu bar, something that allows for a hierarchy. So this is for when you want a single layer or a single level navigation system. Some of the options that you have is for this menu to be in a vertical position like it is right now. This is vertical, but you can change that to horizontal, which we'll do here in a second. You can also change the spacing between the images if you want to. And then this is how the images should behave as far as their width goes. So right now, by default, it's set to be variable based on the object. When it says use variable width based on the object size, that object means the navigation bar object. So this is the size of the object. So that will be the size of the buttons. But I can change that, make it a fixed button width, or I can make it be based on the length of the text. But that's something that you can play with and probably will more often use the default object size for resize mode. Let's uh, click OK so we can see and remember that we switched this to horizontal. And so that's what we have right now. Here's a great thing about this tool is in the style tab, you have a lot of options. But what's great about it is you can preview these before you actually click OK. Down here at the bottom, I've got this preview. And this is what I'm currently working with. I'm working with a navigation bar that has buttons that look like this with this particular font and with this particular behavior when I hover. You'll notice up here where it says my hover button is this blue. Well, you can see that's true. And where the font, it has the color of black, the hover color for my font is white. And as you can see when I test it, that's true. So this is just a great way to preview the work. This is one of the advantages of working with this tool. Now remember I said this is based on images. So you're gonna be able to choose an image from a huge library of images. You have two images for each button. One is the normal state, and then of course there's the hover state. If you don't want that hover effect, then you would change this image to match the normal, and then that effect wouldn't be there. But for now, let's look at this. As you can see, there's a huge library of images. I don't have time to show you all of them. I'm gonna scroll through them very quickly here so you can see it's almost endless. But there is a big library but you're not stuck just with these images. You can also go to the very top, click on use custom image. And if you have an image on your computer that you'd rather use, you can certainly grab that. I'm gonna go back to this one and we'll leave that so I can show you what else you can do with these images. Notice that there is a colorize feature so I can change the effect of this image as far as its color goes. For example, if I don't want that blue hover, but I still wanna use this particular image, I can adjust its color over here, change it to red. Now watch what happens when I preview. It's added a red overlay to that blue button. Padding is about the spacing around the inside edge of the button. And then if I decide I just want to use the jQuery theme, remember the page has its own theme based on jQuery. There's a video about jQuery themes if you're not familiar with that. But basically what that means is if I check this box, I don't have to do anything. It's just going to fit whatever the page's theme is for jQuery which defaults to this one, Cupertino. And then of course you can change that theme. But again, that's a different video. Most of the time you're gonna probably create your own style. Now the animation of this button is how the object behaves when it's hovered over. You can't test the animation in the preview though. You'll need to actually preview the page. You'll need to save your work to see what this looks like. So we'll do one of these here. Uh, instead of uh, no animation, let's choose one such as fade. Should be a little bit subtle. You can't tell here what that looks like. You have to actually click OK, do an F5 to preview the page so that you can test it live. And you can see the fade is a little bit more subtle. It's just a little smooth transition. And without showing you all of the possibilities there, you can see and get the idea that you have a lot of options for controlling the behavior of that transition. You can also control how fast that animation occurs right here. It's called duration. So we could have slowed that fade down even more. This is about a half a second duration. So 1,000 would be about one second. 
The navigation bar can be set to automatically show the hover style of the button when the user is on that particular page. So in other words, if item one was actually our home page, when we're on the home page, this menu would show the hover color instead. It would show this dark blue if this if this was on the home page. That's what the uh, current page setting means. And you can just check this box if that's what you want. Sometimes it helps with your navigation. So when somebody goes to the contact us page, the button that says contact us will look different than the rest of the nav bar. And that's how you do that. There's a video about scroll spy and a fix, and I'll show you those later. But they do apply to this navigation bar setting if you want to know what those are. Watch those videos to learn about that, just more special effects. But basically, that's how the navigation bar works. Normally, for responsive sites, you're going to want to stick with the CSS menu or the menu bar, or in fact, the responsive menu, which is even better for those kinds of sites. But the navigation bar is a great tool if you want to make cool effects, image-based effects for navigation as you're designing your websites in 90 Second Website Builder.